Now you are two winners of the Shannon X9 Classics. Is it one of the more special victories on the resume, Pooley? Yeah, it was for me. It was uh, the final professional series race of my career. Um, so yeah, it was. I had my whole family there to, to get the Shannon X9 Ironman Classic win in front of my family in my last ever professional series race win. It was fantastic. And yourself, Courts, the only multiple winner in both the male and the female field, so you're in rare territory. Oh, thank you so much. And here we're off at the start, but yeah, no, thank you for that. It was, um, yeah, I mean, it was big surf. I'm a surf girl, so I think um, I was really blessed with those couple of races being in that massive surf, and I just went out and enjoyed myself. But um, here we are. We last. talk about, sorry, Courts, cut you right. off there. We talk about club events and club men. Look at the Isaac Costello down the bottom there. He races so hard for his club. He's the coach down there along with Justin McMullen, and they are true club, and they absolutely love Redhead. And um, there was a great article by Josh Minow in the uh, Summer Surf website that sort of highlighted Redhead and the, uh, the stars that they are. But uh, he opted for the lay down paddle doesn't he Paulie? a bit different to everyone else a lot of the redhead paddlers do they've got a bit of a lay down paddle, paddle community they're probably originally founded by the stewie mclaughlin three times or a four times australian open board champion uh yeah look it's it is a different technique you can you can either do the paddling on the belly or you can hop up on the knees now i, I dare say majority of people paddle on the knees a little bit more power but uh the redhead guys find to wiggle their way around the course on the, on the belly. And there we see Matt Bevelac, where the star that he is, take that one out as we see Wander in there as well. So that'll be Noah Stein, a big pop of pump right there. And Braden Casamento, the local boy, and Burley. Now, these clubs will go head-to-head -head all year long. Trust me on that. But it's Matt Bevelac, we're out in front right now for his BMD Northcliffe club. And he's going to be looking to try and get off uh, onto the beach first and make that one a winner. But it's uh, it's Sean Riley there of Burley Heads um, in second spot trying to chase him down. And we see Odin Parry start to work into this one as well as Newport Chucky Brooks he starts to find a little run as well right there on this southern side and we see right on that northern side that hot pink board starting to fly through as well there's the uh, the frash and the bash of Isaac Coscat Costello Look how good he's done. Cozzy on the, the belly there. They can actually manage to wiggle their way onto those little runs there as we just pan across to Sean Riley from Burley there having a fantastic paddle as he pulls up beside Matt Bevelacca of Northcliffe A. As we see those boys about to hit the beach now, they're going to burn through this transition because they want to give their next board paddler every opportunity as we see Northcliffe in one, Burley in two, Redhead in three, Swansea Belmont in fourth and maybe might be our Newport Chucky Brooks in fifth. Yeah, it looks like uh, there's a few little potholes in there, course. I was just about to mention that. I've noticed, um, I started noticing that in the Iron Man, the Iron Woman, a couple of them had a few snipers hit them, so this could actually come down to when, you know, if there's going to be a sprint finish, they've got to watch that. As we see Charlotte Cross and Hannah Scully get tagged there to make their way out for their respective clubs, and it's Charlotte Cross tagged in first for Burley Heads. Hannah Scully, though, back-to-back -back champion in the, over, in the overall board series for the summer surf, so no slouch on the board, that is for sure. As we see as well, Redhead, that'll be Lani Waller, I'd say, of Redhead starting to make her way through, so strong paddle from Isaac Costello. Yeah, she, Isaac Costello set it up so well, but Lani Waller and Redhead has just gone straight past uh, Hannah Scully. She had a, a little bit of a slower start for the girl who just won the, the open board. She's uh, she's in third at the moment. She's just tucked in behind uh, Bert, the, the cap of Burley there, and uh, Redhead looks like they're in second. Northcliffe's uh, in third, but we know how quick Hannah Scully is. No doubt she'll, be, uh, she'll turn on the afterburners for the way home. Yeah, she's a class paddler, Hannah Scully, and... Uh Taplin realise they, they mean a lot, don't they, Courtney? They do, and it's um I just wonder it must be so hard for BMD Northcliffe to pick their teams. And because you know, just in the men's there, I was looking, you know, you've got Bevy and Odin, yeah, both phenomenal paddlers. It just must be so hard behind the scenes trying to trying to pick that up. But as you were saying, Lani Wall before, she's actually the um the under 17 Australian um board champion, so she's definitely um definitely got speed, speed on that board. Um but yeah, we can see going around, he's still got Hannah Scully's paddling so well. Yeah, the class of Hannah Scully. We sort of rode her off a little bit on the way out there, thought that the uh, the two young girls had gone on past her, but then the uh, the wisdom there of Hannah Scully, just to find the right line to the can to take that inside. And is it that important, the inside line pulling? Yeah, it is when you've got flatter conditions like this. Course management is key. Definitely being on the inside gives you a little bit of an advantage. You can sort of... Uh, it makes the person on the outside have to turn a little bit wider and you can even time it really well sometimes as we see a whole bunch of the girls bunch right back up again there under that runner but Hannah Scully just 
Look at Scully go nowhere. right now. She's on this and she's rode this wave to absolute perfection. No wonder she is the queen of the board. Back-to-back -back overall board champion and she is proving herself why right now. She was your sure and partner's Hayden Kenny Classic board champion earlier and she's put her team right out in front. Oh my gosh, what a what a trump card it is to have Hannah Scully tag after Matt Bevelacqua. Two of the best board paddlers in the world. Back-to-back -back for your club. You've got to be happy with that start. Oh, she goes down. That's Sniper again. It's out there. And Hannah's also a, a phenomenal runner as well. So you can actually make a lot of distance in this section too. Yeah, I, I can't even... We'll see in one second who she's going to be going to tag from uh, Northcliffe here. They're not, not short of good swimmers and uh, ski paddlers as that looks like. Joey Collins getting tagged now. And, and Will Savage from Burley. So... Joey Collins is going to be wanting to get off that beach really quick. Will Savage will be doing everything in his power to get back onto the feet there. And uh, look at that in third place. Now, one of my favourite swimmers, Dan Collins from Redhead. He is an incredible swimmer. Yeah, Dan yeah. Collins has had the same pink pair of goggles since he's been in under eights. And uh, the, the Sav man works on a bit of confidence. So Will Savage is a confidence player. And after that third in that Ironman, I think he'll be someone that is going to really put it for his club out here. Um, Joe Collins, though, has been swimming phenomenally. I can't believe Will Savage just started swimming now. So he just porpoise almost halfway out to that first can using those long legs. You were doing that a fair bit. He's yeah, a big your boy, time. isn't he? Oh, yeah. that, that was one of my favourite things. I did not love swimming. I was okay at it. I did not enjoy swimming. I took every opportunity to, to wade, porpoise, dolphin dive, touch the sand, hide under waves, do everything I could to avoid swimming. But look, Will Savage made the most of that for sure. For someone that took, that took so many shortcuts, you turned out all right, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Could find a shortcut. <laughs> um, but Will Sav, yeah, you, said, you mentioned he's a big boy. I think he's about six foot four, about a buck five. So he's a, a big boy. But Joe Collins, the little whippersnipper he is, he's, uh, he's putting it to Will Sav at the moment. He swims so well. Joe Collins is so fast. You know, in the pool every morning at Miami, he just absolutely flies. And as you can see right now, I saw him in so many races last year where he'd get out you know, whether it be in the swim or the Ironman, and he'd, he'd get out there in front and lead. So I think we'll see Joe a lot a lot in front, I think, in the swimming this season. I'm not entirely sold on Joey's line right now, though, however. If Will Savage holds a bit more of a straighter line and comes back in, I don't know if Joey Collins sees something that the rest of us don't. He swam a, a long way north, but maybe he might have picked up something. Oh, look, excuse my ignorance, he's almost picked up a wave that, that would have really put my foot in my mouth. So, Courtney, why, why would Joe Collins do something like that? He's Joe's obviously had a look at the races before, and there has been a wave just slightly off to that north, but there's also one that's been off to the south as well. You saw Will Savage actually come down. Joe's a great body server. As you can see, he's just milking that away. Soon he'll get up, and hopefully he, he won't get one of those, um, those potholes coming through. But he just missed. So he did, I think he lined it up really well, but he just missed it. But Northcliffe still with that lead of about 20 metres. Yeah, he did. He, he, he took that real uh, north line, like we like we say, and it looks like they're uh, they're just trying to get onto that sandbank that we pointed out at the very top of the broadcast that is right there in sort of the middle of the arena. And we don't have a lot of swell up here at Alexandra Headland today, and um, so any little bump is going to turn into a big bump. And look at that, Naomi Scott. She's being tagged, and she's going to fly out, and it's Claudia Slaven there being tagged there for Burley. So Naomi Scott, we know she's been the perennial bridesmaid for so long behind Lani Pallister. She'll be happy that she's not in front of her this time around. And Claudia's also, she's been swimming really well. So she raced up in Bulleye as well. And, and she's had a couple of years out of the sport. So she's really happy to be back there. And she'll just try and get her name his feet. Watch for Lani Pallister here. She enters, enters the water in sixth position. You can see her right in the middle of the screen right now. The checkered cap of black and yellow. Watch for her to mow her way through this field. She's going to put in a big performance. But being the taplin, the swim is shortened. So in the actual surf race, they went around the green race one ca um, cans. In this taplin, they shortened it to the iron course so they're going around the lapco collective white swim can so probably a bit too short for lani uh, pallister to make much amends for that um, especially on the likes of someone like naomi scott yeah it'll just it will just have to wait and see if she's got enough time to do it she'll definitely be catching but it's just whether she's got that time and naomi scott being out in front as we saw you know she was right in line level you know with lani in that in that swim so she's um, a powerful swimmer and um, we can already see lani's come through She's already in third, so she's definitely going to, I guess, try and, um, you know, 
get that damage and, and bring it down to as close as possible. It will be interesting to see how much energy in the tank Naomi's got left because she's uh, definitely had a uh, jam-packed schedule of events today as opposed to, say, Lani Pallister, who's only doing the taplin and the surf race. Uh, what Naomi's been in the the Iron Woman, the swim, and then she may she's in the taplin now, obviously, and she may as well have been in the board and ski potentially as well. I'm not sure, but she would have had a very jam-packed day of racing. She's still hold, doing very, very well indeed to hold the uh, the lead there. Yeah, Naomi Scott, she's taken that direct line, so it hasn't followed Joe Collins in, so she's taken that direct line, whereas Lani Pallister has taken the Joe Collins line, so she is going to look for those waves. She's trying and she sort of knows, I need to do something in order to make, up, make the ground up, and Naomi Scott might be able to just pick this one up. She does, she tries to get the head down, she tries to kick through, and she will. So great body surfing skills there from Naomi Scott. She's going to touch the sand first. We've got two legs to come, the ski paddlers. Here we go, the frash and bash. That just came at the perfect time, didn't it? But Naomi did that really, really well. She just really milked it through, and she just got in that nice streamlined position. And with Lani Pallister coming behind you, it's always nice to pick up a little wave just towards the end. There's, there's no greater feeling, is there, rather than pulling on a nice little oh. swim wave. When you're coming in, whether it's a surf race or an Iron, Iron Man, Iron Woman event, when you pick up a body surf wave, isn't it just the best? Oh, it's just the best feeling. And you also get a nice little rest and a breather. You get to rest your legs or you give them a little bit of kick and shake them around so you can get up and really work that transition. And working that transition is what Naomi Scott is trying to do. She's going to run in and she's going to tag Riley Fitzsimmons. So a very, very strong team here from the BMD Northcliff Club. And you're going to watch this ski fly off the beach. The race one black and red model there of Riley Fitzsimmons. He is going to try and fly home and it's going to be Jamo Porter that's going to try and chase him down. So the, the head coach of the Alex Ski Crew, Jamo Porter, has the task in front of him to take down Riley Fitzsimmons. There hasn't been much of a wave on all day, but I tell you, Ro Riley Fitz just wore two or three on the lap. It didn't do much to uh, slow him up, but it, it did a little bit. But as we see now, he's already out the back, and look at those buckets of water flicking out the back of him. You don't, I mean, you're not an Olympic kayaker, are you, if you can't uh, pull some serious boat and paddle through the water? Is it a difficult position to be in now, so far out in front? Oh, look. Riley Fitz is a winner. He's a, he's a guy that's been in this position so many times. I think he's, he would be hopping on his ski and, and he'd be so focused on his technique and what he's doing. He's not really thinking about the rest of the field behind him. He's just worrying about what he can control. Yeah, we almost just had a bird fly on through the booth and Courtney and I ducked almost down. Lost. If anyone knows me, they know I don't like birds. So <laughs> me too, I'm just, with you. We almost just had to cut the stream right there. Um, it was but, poorly for one to finish off the rest <laughs> of the show. We almost lost half and uh, Courtney there. Um, but for yourself, um, for those at home watching, the little nippers that are doing these team events and getting tagged in a position to be out in front, to be first, how do they pace a race when you are out in front? I think when you, you've got to, I think you've just got to go with the feel of the ocean in your body with how you're feeling and, and just really back yourself and, and that's something that you know Riley's so good at. He's you know won so many open ski titles and you can just see he just looks so relaxed. So I think when you're out in front and especially in a real eight, you know, don't feel that pressure, just relax those shoulders, drop in and um, and yeah, I think you just gotta grab that energy from the rest of your teammates and, and look at Riley just coming through. He just yeah, he just looks so relaxed and um, yeah, can take a big breather now. And completely opposite to the swimmers where they would cut back in on that swim can to get that sandbank. The ski paddlers are going wider down to the south, so just chasing those wind swells, Paulie? Yeah, look, the skis, they can afford to chase the swells down to the south. As we just saw then, Riley did surf it back to the north as much as possible. Those big ski paddlers, they don't love running, so they do want to try and make that run transition as short as possible, but look at the big fella as he gets up, makes his way around right there. He could be front rower for the uh, Brisbane Lions. Brisbane uh, Broncos, sorry, yeah, apologies, make, as he makes his way down there to make the final tag now. They've got a handy little lead. Yeah, he'd make a good uh, small forward in basketball. He loves his NBA, old Riley Fitzsimmons. He's currently leading the Fantasy League as well, so he'll be happy with that little plug. He's finished last in the last <laughs> two years, so nice to see him on top in not only this uh, mixed person taplin, but also the Fantasy uh, fantasy League, the Forex Summer Fantasy League, that one is. Uh, but we are, we're in the final leg now, the final leg of a jam-packed event, the Shore and Partners Hayden Kenny Classic. It's Northcliffe well and truly out in front. It's Burley trying to chase them down, but this is almost a victory lap now, isn't it? 
Yeah, they, they're really, Northrop have really stretched ahead now, and especially these girls in second, third, fourth and fifth, they're just about to get hit by that little, I wouldn't call it a shorey, but just that little wave on the, the water's edge there. And I think, um, you know, it's never over till the end, but um, certainly if um, Northcliffe out in front, if they have a little look around when they get to the end of that apex can and, and pick up a runner, it's, yeah, it's done and dusted. Yeah, we've got Northcliffe, Burley, Northcliffe and Alexandra Headlands. I think they'll be fighting out for the minor placings there, the second and the third, the battle is still well and truly on there as we watch uh, our Northcliff A team rounding that first can right now. Just on saying that, um, is that Jas Jasmine Raywood paddling for Burley? Because if she's in second there, she she's feeling like this race is not over. She's just got her head down and she's absolutely going for it. So I don't think it is. I think Jasmine's on the green and pink ski okay. and it's a blue ski. So well, Whoever's in yeah, second there is really um, going for strength for strength. But yeah, strong paddle here for the final, uh, for the final Northcliffe uh, crew. Yeah, she's had an incredible paddle there. As we see, second, third, and fourth are only just now coming around that final third ski can. Uh, she's she's in the wave zone, making her way back to the beach. She's going to pick up a little bump. Ever so, ever so good. She can drop the paddle. Yeah, well, home I, and host. What's, uh, what's the prize money for the uh, the mixed taplin duff? I don't Good. know if the prize money matters in a, in a mixed taplin, does it? It's more the pride for your club and, and doing all of that. But it's almost that uh, Ethan Callahan has just stolen the show of today. And um, it's been a walk in the park for BMD Northcliffe here. They've done it so easy. They're going to be the uh, the champions. And they've taken one away from Alexandra Headlands on their home beach. And they can enjoy it. That's the best feeling. Yeah, big smiles that. on the face there as they make their way across the sand and up the beach here. Here on the Sunshine Coast as we see they just celebrate there the whole club gets involved doesn't matter what team you're in doesn't matter bit what part of uh, what paddle you've done what leg you've done and you get to have that victory lap there at the very end a big finish there BMD North fifth they take one away from Alex Headland and they're trying to get one more here as Georgia Miller tries to battle on past here can she do a stumble oh fully was that Taylor Halliday That's Taylor, Taylor Halliday. Halliday from Alex almost fell right before that she had it she almost. almost fell right before the finish line the Georgia Miller came was, out again yeah, yeah. almost did the reverse Versus Stephen Bradbury, <laughs> the Bradbury Stephen. Oh, what a finish! What a finish we have. Northcliffe one and three. Alexandra Headlands just ever so close and hanging on to that second position there. As we wrap up the uh, the finals package of our first 10,000 event of the Sean Partners Financial Services Hayden Kenny Classic here on the Sunshine Coast. What an incredible day of racing! It's uh, guys, it's been a pleasure to host with your Duff Courts. It's fantastic. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun, and uh, I know that we're going to get a, an interview on the beach with the uh, with the winning team, BMD Northcliffe, and then we'll come back and we'll wrap up the show. We'll go through the uh, the event rundown and what what's to come, and uh, a big, exciting couple of weeks there to finish off uh, 2023. We've obviously um, the Glenelg Sprint Challenge next week, the Fungamata Classic, as well as the Battle of the Bull, uh, the Battle of the Bay, sorry, down in Warnable. Um, it's going to be an absolute cracker. A big shout out again to our New Zealand uh, viewers over in New Zealand team. TV, as well as that, the um, the crew here um, on the Sunshine Coast have been great hosts there for Alexandra Headland. And it's certainly been dramatic here, hasn't it? We've almost been hit by a sign, hit by a bird. Yeah, look at the Northcliffe guys all celebrating there, the A team and the B team. Look at the names there, but they've won... Uh, a lot of the events today between all of those, the North Fifth 12, 12 of their best competitors that they put forward. What an incredible day that the uh, North Cliff, BMD Northcliffe Club have had. And it's a really special event for BMD Northcliffe. They, um, you know, I remember the, the men's um, Australian titles. They've won, you know, numerous, numerous. But we'll just, uh, we'll just go back on the beach and here we have the interview with Ali with um, BMD Northcliffe. <laughs> Oh, they're getting a little glamour shot first, it All looks right, like. Naomi, a nice, nice little photo put Naomi. on the wall up the club. I'm sure that'll be posted uh, well and truly over there. I'm here with Naomi Scott, the gotta... swimmer in the, in the open mixed six-person Taflin relay. Tell us, BMD Northcliffe, you've been at the top of the, of the podium many times before. What does it mean together as a club to win this event? Oh, that was so awesome. I feel like the six-person mixed Taflin is such a great event, having the girls and boys to come come together at the end of the day so yes yeah, 
just tried my best then and I'm lucky that I managed to pull down a wave at the end and, and give a little bit of a lead over to Riley and, and everyone in our team just did so well, so it means a lot. Absolutely, your swim was such a pinnacle um, moment in that race. You really brought your team forward and to do that, it was fantastic to watch. Thank you.